Mongoose Jake here to do a mod video and tutorial. We're going to take a look at the Busby Pirate Pistol, which is a favorite of mine now for years. The Busby Pirate Pistol is very unique in that it has a, well, obviously, a muzzle loading flintlock style design. And what would have been the flintlock mechanism is actually how you prime the blaster. Now, it has absolutely horrendous performance. I mean, if you couldn't pick that up on that little flop of a shot. The big problem is, is that it has the old style of Busby dart post. And Nerf used to do this as well. Can't pick on Busby. At the base of it, there are very little outlets for the air to come out of the uh, plunger tube and through. You can see that. I still have this Tech 4 cylinder apart. You can look down there and see. Move my hand. Right there, you see itty bitty teeny tiny holes for the air to come through. And that restricts the performance greatly. So, on top of that, of course, it has an itty bitty teeny tiny uh, plunger tube. But the biggest hurdle for performance with this is that old style dart post. And it's almost like a jet nozzle. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at taking this apart. Not this one. Already got the one apart, save us a little trouble. We're going to take this apart and see, what, and see what we can do to get the performance raised at least a little bit. Now, I'm going to set that one aside because I actually have four of these. I'm going to do this to in total. And it's something that you do, do not need to put a lot of work into other than the brass. That is, of course, the key element here is we need to give it a small brass barrel. And I do say small. The uh, the point is, is that you're not going to ever be able to upgrade the spring on these without causing severe structural issues. Because the way that they prime, if you don't know, is you actually pull the flint lock down, load a dart in the front, and then fire. Precise pros fire a little bit better. But what we're going to try to do is get the best performance out of this without sacrificing the durability of the pistol. And because of the design, you really can't up the spring rate that much because I'll throw this back together real quick and let you see how this works. In stock form, you have plunger tube goes into that. That's actually your barrel entirely. Yeah, that's that's really that's your barrel. That's what goes in here, down inside. It has a little O uh, O ring or O ring of plastic on the outside that is solvent welded. You will have to pry that apart. I've already done that, so we don't have to worry about seeing seeing me fight with that. I wouldn't I wouldn't do the boiling method on this, due to the fact that these are uh, now I do believe these were 2009 models, no 2007, so they're 13 year old pistols. Now I'll have this reassembled for you real quick, and we can see how this actually operates, and you'll see why I don't recommend doing a lot to these. Okay, now with this piece back together real quick, just for demonstration purposes, this is what the internals look like when you open it up. Again, you see that's a itty bitty little bit of barrel, and my brass, I cut it at a length that won't stick out to the front. So we aren't going to sacrifice. We aren't going to sacrifice the uh, the stock appearance. We're looking at about 47 millimeters of brass length, or roundabout one and three quarter inches actually it'd be one and thirteen sixteenths so one and thirteen sixteenths of brass or roughly 47 millimeters now to prime this you actually are pulling the the flint lock back and that actually is grabbing that a little brown peg on the side of the priming rod and as it pulls back you're having to get this all the way back and it catches back here. It's having trouble with the flexing. There. <laughs> and yes, my trigger did just go flying. It's a problem with needing, I need four hands, really. We'll grab the trigger and put it back in place. And due to this unique system, as we're going to call it, this 
is a breakage point. Trigger again. <laughs> and the main problem I have seen, like I said, I have, I have no four or five of these pistols. I'm trying to shoot for about eight in total, really. I tr try to get them as I can, but I really want to get about eight in total. I want to run a loadout of just these. Much like Captain Xavier's Jolt loadout. But me, being the Busby guy, I want Busby Pirate Pistols. Just for the heck of it. But the point is, is you have, unfortunately, as you can see down in there, a small screw. That is where this breaks. There is a square taper junction between the black, I'm going to say the priming rotational mechanism, let's give it a proper term here, and the flint lock mechanism. When you pull this back, this is not a one piece unit because of course they have to assemble it. Well, it has a square taper junction and the screw holds it together. Out of the ones I own, three are used. I got, I got one or I'm trying to think if I have two new, but out of the three that were used, two are broke right there. And they splits over time. And really the only fix for them is to epoxy it together with a very high strength, high tensile strength glue. That's really the only fix, unless you wanted to go out and get metal versions made, which would be a really nice solution. But when you fire this, let's try to, try to give it some resistance, then it releases. There's not going to be much you can do spring-wise, because if you add in a higher power spring, all you're going to do is break this. That's it. So the only thing we can do is to try and improve the barrel. So long story short, drill this out. Get rid of that dart post. What I do is I, I crimp it off when I had the pistol apart. Take this out, crimp, it, crimp that dart post out, drill it the rest of the way down. Take your brass, again, just over an inch and three quarters. Do, do as you wish, but it's not going to have a lot of power to really fire a dart if the brass is too long. But I trumpeted it. Here at the end, I put a bevel on the edge, and then I trumpeted it out. I crimped the other end in to prevent it, the dart from going in too far, and then all I'm going to do is press fit it. That's all, I, that's all I actually ever do with brass into plastic. Press fit. The brass is now all the way down in. I can verify that here by looking as you can as well. And then all we need to do is then epoxy this back onto the end of the plunger tube and button up the blaster. And then we're good to go. So I'll do that, button up the blaster, and I'll come back to you guys and we'll see how well it performs compared to the stock one. Okay, now that it's put back together, I haven't put my uh, plastic ring back on just yet, but I do have it all back together nicely and you can see the brass itself will be just about covered by the plastic oh the plastic ring when I put it back on just about but for now I'm leaving it off to make it really easy to identify which one I'm firing now first off we're going to fire a few shots with the complete bone stock one 40.5 that was a Adventure Force waffle tip. 41.4. That was a Busby long distance. Here's a Nerf action strike. 49.4. Hmm, quite nice. And let's go for another long distance start. 36.2. And finally, a Precise Pro. 52.2. As usual, they give a little bump. Okay, let's do the same thing here with this. Okay, we'll see how this one performs now. First off, we'll do the Adventure Force Swaffle Tip. 71.2. I, I will believe it when I see another one. Okay. 55.5. Fifty-five point five, 
62.3 on a long distance. Let's do a precise pro real quick. Eighty two point six. We'll do a few more. I have fifty eight point eight. Fifty six point eight. Let's go look, I got a couple precise pros in there. We'll dig those out and I'll do a few shots with them and see if it likes those. As of now it seems like we've got a mild improvement. Nothing amazing. Seventy-eight point one. So yes, I mean, obviously now, if you want to really make use of this, firing precise pros seems to be the trick for it. Seventy point four. So it seems like you can get at least elite performance out of the pirate pistol if you're going to fire precise pros. But the average person isn't going to be using precise pros heavily like I do. And that's the thing with me is my personal loadout is pretty much precise pros. So, or worker full lengths. 59.7 with a worn out old elite dart. How about, how about an AccuStrike? 64.4. So around about 60-ish with your typical darts and round about 70 plus with precise pros that makes it usable you're bringing it up from 40 feet per second round about up to we'll say 60 for the the basic darts round about because i mean you throw a basic dart in a non-modified one 39.8 so jumping up from jumping up from 39.8 to 60 goes from it's a neat pistol that it's terrible to actually try and use to it's a neat pistol that maybe a little underperforms but still but actually could be used 60 feet per second can be used as a, a neat little backup i mean that's jolt performance so it at least brings it up to jolt performance and then if you're willing to spring to go find some precise pros then 79.6 and i've been hitting as you've seen i've hit between 79 to 80 with the precise pros consistently now. I think the key is don't put too much brass on this. As you see here, once I put that orange ring back on, it's gonna be barely even or just a tiny little bit out from the orange plastic. So that's the right length. Anymore, I think you're actually going to hurt the performance because you know too much brass, if your available power doesn't overcome the friction because yes having a tight barrel adds friction if it doesn't if you don't have enough power to overcome the length of barrel you add on it's going to actually degrade your performance this i think is the right length it barely protrudes out of the actual shell and then once i put the orange safety tip on it'll be right where it needs to be so that's, I think that's worthy. We've made ourselves a pirate pistol and brought it up from around 40 feet per second with your typical darts to 60 feet per second with your typical darts and up over 70 if you're willing to use precise pros. With a sum quick summary is drill out the stock barrel, get rid of the old dart post and put in roughly one and three quarter inch length of 17 30 seconds brass with a trumpeted end that I've also beveled. As you can see there, it's got a nice shiny bevel. Plus, it is it is trumpeted out, as you can definitely see here. Oh yeah, you can definitely see it. it's got a nice trumpet. Almost matches what is supposed to be the ramrod. But it's Smokey Jake with my tutorial of how to make a Busby Pirate pistol usable. I hope you enjoy this, and thanks for watching.